Hi everyone. Shall, shall we get started? I, 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 I thought it would be a session chair or something. I don't know. Maybe I'll just get started. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Xinxiang Chu. Uh, I was the software engineer intern at Xscale Solutions in this summer. Um, Right now, I'm a graduate stu student, a PhD student at Ohio State University. But today, I'm going to uh, present this work I have done in this summer at, at Scale Solution. It's about the uh, high performance MPI and deep learning on open power platforms. So, a little bit information about at Scale Solutions. Uh, the main goal of uh, we are doing is just trying to provide the solutions, some service support and training to our customers. For those customers, like they want to do something on the cluster, like HPC cluster, high performance computing clusters, some supercomputer, they have maybe thousands of nodes or like CPU or GPU. And if they don't know how to scale, we are here to help using some uh, communication library, that's our expertise uh, using some like MPP2 library or some big data library like RDNA-based Hadoop, Spark, those kind of things. Uh, today I'm going to uh, introduce two products we, we just going to release today after this presentation. One is, a, we call it Xscale HPC, it's a high performance HPC solutions for like any kind of MP, uh, HPC problem on open power platform. Another one is the S-scale AI, is mainly targeting the AI problem, like deep learning, those kind of new, uh, very important applications nowadays. Also, we are, we are going to support this uh, on open power platform. So if you want to know more about this, uh, you can visit our website or just simply send us an email. So I will first briefly introduce some trend we observed in the HPC technologies. Then I will talk about uh, our solution about first one is the S scale HPC, and second one is how we use all these HPC technologies to accelerate in your uh, uh, AI problem, how, uh, how we improve your performance of the mainly for deep learning training performance on pow open power systems. So recently, if you are aware of the top 500 supercomputer, this list, so you can see right now in recent years, those computers basically using first, of, of course, multi-core or many-core CPU like Intel CPU or open power Power 9 CPUs, for example, the submit, number one, submit system, or number two, Sierra system, and then a lot of other systems. But they are not just using CPUs, They're, because you need to connect a lot of resources all together, a lot of machines all together. You need a high performance interconnects like InfiniBand. Metal Loss InfiniBand provide you very good uh, low latency and high bandwidth. Of course, there are other interconnects we'll briefly talk about later about like Omnipath or uh, other interconnects. And also they have accelerators like GPU, NVIDIA GPU is kind of the mainstream right now, but there are more like FPGA or other GPU from other vendors that are coming up as well. Uh, but in this talk, I will focus on the NVIDIA GPU. And also you have some storage like SSD or NVMe, these kind of things. So basically uh, for HPC technologies, we can briefly like simply talk about like first the hardware, next one is the software. So hardware side, we like the inter interconnects, InfiniBand, Rocky, Omnipath, and processes, you have GPU, you have CPU, like open power CPU or GPU, oh sorry, tens TPU, like Google Tensor Processing Unit for accelerating specifically for the deep learning workload. Or also the FPGA is there as well. And you can, you not only have the hardware, you also need a very good software to support, to scale your application. If your application is going to, uh, 
running on large scale system, you have thousands of nodes, you want to run on that and still have a good performance, you need to have a scalable communication middleware. So some example like very classic, the message passing interface. And now because if you're using NVIDIA GPU, you need a CUDA aware MPI to have the best possible performance. And also, you could also use NVIDIA Nico library. That, that's about for deep learn, specific for deep learning workflow. I also talk about it a little bit later. So first, let's look at the hardware. In the, in the interconnect side, you have InfiniBand, OmniPath, those are very fast uh, interconnects. Also, like if some of you may know, coming years, there will be a Cray uh, slingshot. This also will be coming next year, I think. And they have a very good performance, low latency very low, just few microseconds. Bandwidth is very high, could be like 200 gigabit, gigabit per second. And because of the RDNA, you can bypass the CPU when you're doing the communication. So it's, it has very low CPU overhead. And you can see all these kind of interconnect in the top, top, top 500 supercomputer list. It's very common there. And in the CPU side, the microprocessor, we can see over the years, it's, be, it's keep improving, like not just the number of transistor, transistors per chip, also the power consumption is getting lower and lower. And, but the single thread performance is kind of stuck. It's still improving, but slowly. That's why people trying to come up something new, like NVIDIA GPU, uh, they, they give you very good performance, like. Uh, the latest NVIDIA Volta GPUs give you very good performance, especially for the deep learning work. Like you, if you are doing some uh, deep, deep neural network training, like Resonate 50, or you are doing some inference, using this GPU gives you very good performance, very good speed up. So after you have all this hardware in place, next one you need the software to really uh, utilize these hardware efficiently. So first one, if you're going to scale using MPI, uh, naively, you can use MPI like this. You, because the uh, default, like most MPI library, they don't support CUDA like transparently. So for most people do will, like your application will be like this. You copy the data to a CPU memory or system memory, then you do it like send receive using MPI, MPI send, MPI receive. And data will be received on the CPU buffer. Then you, do it, you need to do another copy to copy the data from CPU to GPU. It's high productivity because the code is very easy to write like this, but the performance will not be optimal. So like maybe five or eight years ago, People start working on this GPU aware or CUDA aware if you're using NVIDIA GPU, which means like you, you can just write the code like this, MPI send, MPI receive. Then inside the MPI library, they can recognize, okay, this buffer is a GPU, it's from GPU memory. So we can have some optimized design, for example, some pipelining to overlap the communication because we have RDNA here. So you can have a not just a good productivity, the code is easy to write, and also because the, this communication middleware take care of all these kind of pipelining design implementation there, so the performance will be very good. This from the MPI world, and recently, in recent year, maybe I guess four years ago, uh, because all these uh, deep learning become uh, more and more popular, NVIDIA introduced their own NVIDIA collective communication library called NICO. So basically they are doing, they are optimizing the GPU communication, focusing on the collective communication because it, that's the most important uh, communication pattern in the deep learning workload. Like, like they are doing these kind of all reduced communication between a lot of GPUs. They, are, they actually optimize these a communication pattern in a dense multi-GPU system, like their DGX machine, which like DGX2, they have 16 Volta GPU connect by NVLink and NV switch. So they, they optimize this kind of system. Also recently, like their recent release, uh, I think it's Nico 2.4, they also 
give very good performance on the power, open power system like uh, Summit. So you have this communication library. This is just some background. Then at Scale Solution, uh, we introduced two, uh, two products here. First one we call Xscale HPC is focusing on the HPC application, some classic uh, scientific application. It's not using like AI, uh, those kind of framework. So why we need these? Because even though you have a lot of good MPI libraries, but how you get the best possible performance for your application is still very hard. First, you need to know what MPI library you're going to use. Like there are a lot of MPI libraries, Open MPI, Spectrum MPI, uh, Intel MPI or MVP2, blah, 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 you name it, it's a lot. And even if you choose the MPI library, there are so many uh, like parameters. Maybe for each MPI library, there could be hundreds of parameters you can tune like to get a performance on your system. For different systems, you need to tune these parameters differently. So it's a very complicated, time-consuming, most importantly, tedious work. So that's why we are introducing the Xscale HPC uh, package. Basically, we provide a fine-tuned uh, uh, library, uh, communication library, using its MPI base. Then it can give you out of the box the optimal performance on open power platform. So I'm, here I just refer to this paper. Uh, this paper is just presented in the International Workshop on Open Power HPC uh, like just two months ago. Basically, compare all kind of CUDA aware MPI library on the open power system, like number one submit system. So you can see the difference between the different MPI libraries. You just run the MPI library on the same system, you get all kinds of different performance. That's, that's very hard for some people It's not very familiar with this library, so you need to spend a lot of time to tune it. For example, you can see here for latency, MRP2 is, GDR is doing very well for small message. For large message, this MPI library looks like they are performing similar. And bandwidth wise, looks like they are very good. Um, like here is the intranet, like doing the com send receive communication between two GPU. And uh, it's just within a node, so it will go through the NV link. So you can see, okay, all these library looks really good. Like bandwidth wise, they can saturate the NV link. And for internal communication, uh, latency wise, you see, okay, um, MRP to GDR and open API, uh, sorry, open MPI plus using UCS provide very good performance in latency. And spectral MPI, uh, still a little bit like MP5, but I think, I believe it's improving in the latest version. And in bandwidth wise, actually you can see spectral MPI is very good in bandwidth wise, but then now open MPI is actually not very good at bandwidth. This is internal, like point to point, go through the infinite band network. So there's a trade-off. And here we see like MVP2 provide a reasonable, stable uh, performance across all different like configuration, different communication pattern. So uh, we'll use that in our package. And next one, not just the point to point, we also, uh, there's also a work evaluating the collective, like all reduce. All reduce is a very important communication pattern for deep learning workload. So if you compare the MVP2 GDR to Nico, you can also see latency wise, using MPI, like using MVP2, actually you get better latency. And they also optimize for, for the bandwidth, as you can see here. And it's scale, scale very well. You can see they run this experiment on submit system up to like uh, one, uh, sorry, 15,000, sorry, 1,000, 1,500 GPUs and get your good performance. And there's, there's some issue with spectral MPI and open MPI at the large scale. So that's why in this, uh, at scale, so the HPC package we, are, we, we introduce here, we use uh, OSU MVP2 library, and it's a scalable, it's scalable, but not only, like, not only used in that, we also tune it, we spend a lot of time doing a lot of tuning on open power systems, so you, I, we can provide the output box, the fine tune and optimal performance on the 
it's open power platform. We're also working on other platform like x86 platform. And if you are interested and you can contact us, we can work on uh, to provide your product to test it on your system and we have a free trial. So just give you a quick look how it looks like. like we give a very simple installation, like just one command, it looks like this. You just run one command to install. We'll install MPI library, also the benchmark there. And to run it, also one command, you can run it like, if you are familiar with the like MPI uh, library, MPI run, those kind of things, it's exactly the same command we use here, just the, the executable is a little bit different, but using this to launch your job, um, you can launch your job on thousands of GPU. There's no problem. But by default, we just like run or reduce, like this for some uh, deep learning workload. But you can run any kind of applications here just using one simple command. And it give you already tuned performance. And the next one is Xscale AI. That's because like we all know the AI now because of deep learning, because all this hardware, and it becomes ever popular. So we also provide another solution based on our experience, experience on Xscale HPC. So we use, use that to, to introduce a new product called Xscale AI. So I guess we all know this deep learning use case is like endless. And it's, it's, it's keep growing, growing every year. So you know the revenue there is incredible. And in the deep learning, they usually use NVIDIA GPU. It's kind of dominating right now, but there are more. AMD GPU is also coming. FPGA is also coming for deep learning. So it could be different in the future, but right now, still, GPU is the most important hardware for deep learning guys, the uh, workload. And they are actually using HPC resource. They are running uh, on HPC systems. And HPC systems, there's a lot of HPC system actually powered by the GPU, then they are using MPI library, like we mentioned, those special MPI or open, open MPI or MVP2. The problem is there are a lot of deep learning framework. Google has TensorFlow, Facebook has PyTorch, uh, or Microsoft has CNTK, and you name, there's a lot, different vendor come up different uh, deep learning framework for different purpose. So it's, it's so many choices you have. And, but you, if you're familiar with deep learning, you only have two major tests in all these framework. First one, training. You do the training of the deep neural network you defined, and you do the training, you get the model, then you use that to do an inference. <coughs> And we are focused here like at the DLN training because this is the most uh, compute and communication intensive. It can take like days or weeks, of course. So that's why we need a faster training, a lot of work basically from academia or industry, they, they, they are a lot of work like trying to optimize deep learning from top to bottom. And uh, in our, in, in SQL solution, our SP is at the, communication. That's why we focus on the parallel and distributed training, like how we can use more GPU and we can scale very good, or multi, like 100 or 1,000 GPUs. So it comes back to the same problem we, we mentioned for the HPC side. Because you need to scale your deep learning application to a lot of GPU nodes, so you need a communication. Then your, the, the choice you have is, again, message pass interface using MPI or using some specific library like Nico or Gulu or Baidu or Reduce, all kind of different communication libraries. And if you prefer, you can, you, some people also using big data like Spark or Hadoop. But it all comes to the, all comes to the same problem, like how you scale up and how you scale out. So to give you a brief idea, basically scale up means how you get a good intranode performance communication performance, like you have like dozens of GPUs on a node, and how you can scale up on this one machine, that's we call scale up. And we know most of the 
uh, deep learning framework, they, doing, they are doing very well at this part, the scale up part. But to scale out is more important because you need to communicate with all kind, all, a lot of machines. There's an internal communication. So that's what most deep, deep learning framework the, do not do very good. And that's why we need some communication library, optimized com communication library like MPI or NICO. So you can see different deep learning framework, they have different, they, they, they choose different direction. Cafe using MPI or CNTK using MPI or NICO. Google TensorFlow using maybe gRPC or you can also use MPI, you can also use NICO, they give a lot of different options. And, and all. And to, to, to achieve the data parallel deep learning like, or distributed deep learning using MPI, basically it comes to two, uh, actually it's only one operation, communication right now. Earlier it's like broadcast and reduce because you have some gradient, you need to exchange those things. And now, now basically everybody agree like using a one or reduce operation is kind of equal, equivalent to the broadcast plus reduce. So all reduce becomes the most, uh, one of the most important communication op operation for deep learning. I mean, for the data parallel, uh, so for data parallelism. Of course, there are different uh, approach, but this one is the most popular, not popular one now, so let's, we are focusing here. So right now we, we have the, Everything together, we have the hardware, you have HPC, your goal is your to achieve your deep learning, a high performance deep, deep learning training. So hardware, you have like Power9 system, like Summit, and in HPC side, the communication library, uh, we choose MPI-based approach using MVP2, like same reason uh, we mentioned previously in the SQL HPC then we can see very good scalability uh, for the deep learning workload. So I will show some performance number later. So first, like our solution, like I mentioned, we, we basically, our solution is, is high performance and scalable because we fully exploiting the HPC resource based on our experience in the HPC side. And we also provide the out of box optimal performance performance on, on power system, power nine system specifically. Um, we test it on the submit system. And we are we're also working on other system. Uh, it will be coming very soon. But now, right now we focus on the power nine system. And what's inside this X scale AI package is that we ha you have you will have once you download this package, you will have the fine-tuned CUDA aware MPI library on power system. Uh, we, we use Google, Google TensorFlow framework, which is built with open power system. And it's an MPI approach, and we also use the Harovo to achieve the distributed deep, uh, training uh, using MPI. And also we have provide some easy to use script and uh, runtime, so you can do very simple installation and execution. So to install the XQL, uh, AI, uh, as I mentioned, we use TensorFlow 1.12. Like, if you prefer other versions, we can work on it as well. Like, because that's the version we know. If you you have ever have experience like building TensorFlow from source, there's a lot of problems. So we spend a lot of time trying to debug those. So this is the stable version we have 1.12. But that we can work on. We are also working on the other uh, newer versions. Then you have MPI library built with, with it and Harovo and uh, TensorFlow benchmark. So you, once you have all these, you can quickly run some simple benchmark to see where you stand. And you need to offer these some other uh, details that like you need to uh, make sure you have all these uh, like CUDA libraries in your environment. Once you have all these, uh, you can just install in one command, like SCALE AI installation. So you can see here, we check the licenses, then install all the, the package you need, like Miniconda, because the Python uh, dependency, and TensorFlow 1.12, and the MPI library, which is MFP2 GDR right now, and also the Harovo and the benchmark here. 
So once you install it, you can just simply run this command like this is executable. After that, it could be any of, it could be a benchmark, could be your application. Then you just run this. By default, we just run the benchmark like ResNA 15 and do some uh, simple training to to launch your job on the power system like like this. Like you run this, and by default, we run some using TensorFlow benchmark to run some experiments, so you get your, your performance like image per second. So it's all come uh, in one package. It's very easy to use, uh, install, and use it. So we have tested uh, first on DGX2 machine. This is not power system, but we also test it because there, this is one very like popular AI system. So we also test it, and we see we have like 9% higher uh, throughput compared to Nico, and we have very good scaling efficiency. It's near, it's still not 100% like, like ideal, but it's like more than 90% scaling efficiency, and it's much better than the Nico, which is the kind of state of the art right now. And we also try to uh, evaluate this on the power system on submit. So we, do, we, we try the uh, ResNet 50 training using a TensorFlow benchmark, and we run like again here like 50 hundred GPU on this system. Then it runs, and we get very good uh, performance, like uh, like the image per second, and scale, scale very well. You all, you can see this graph it almost double every time you double the GPU. You kind of get a double the uh, performance, like image per second. So. Roughly, like we can, you can finish, like you can do this training in five point, like five and a half minutes, like using this uh, fifteen uh, sorry, fifteen hundred GPU in five and a half minutes. You can train uh, image net one K, like one point two million images. So we have very good scalability here. We can also run like. We, we have tried and it works. It runs on the 22,000 GPUs, but it's only one run, so I cannot put those numbers here, but we, it, it runs. We just, we don't have allocation to, we, we cannot get those allocation again, so I cannot inc include those numbers here, but it runs and it scales very well. We are sure about it. And, but, and if you are interested, we can always like, talk and work together. And compared to Nico, we can see because we, we, we have very similar performance than Nico, up to 96 GPU, but after that, we are seeing some issues. It could be issue could be coming from Nico or co coming from Spectral MPI because we use Spectral MPI to launch the job for Nico. And so we're still trying to figure out what's, problem, what's their problem. But from here, we can see at least from SKL AI, our product, we can see a very good uh, scalability here. So to quickly conclude this talk, like uh, we introduced these two products today. Uh, SQL HPC is an optimized MPI library on various uh, HPC systems, including power systems. So if you have any kind of traditional MPI application, some scientific application, as long as it's using MPI, you can use this product to get a very good performance, very scalable performance on a large scale system. The next one is the Xscale AI. Similarly, based on our experience on HPC, we, we provide this high-performance solution for distributed training for the AI problems. So you can get out of the box the tuned, fine-tuned uh, performance on open power platforms. So that will be it. So if you are interested, feel free to contact us. Or I, I'm very happy to talk to you offline. And you can just send me, a, send us an email, and we can, you can start using a free trial and anything. So with that, I would like to thank you. Like, and if you, there's any question, I would like to answer it. Thanks. Uh, yeah. You mentioned TensorFlow 1.12. Yes. And did you make changes to that in order to make it run for distributed? Uh, oh, you mean the code? Yeah. No, 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 no. Just. Just to build, like you, you, have, you need to have a lot of different dependency to build it successfully. So we just take care of those part for you. We didn't change the TensorFlow itself. It still come from the same source code you got from, from Google. Yeah. Did you, like, how do you install that on the system? Is it through RPM or? 
a TensorFlow or what, like the Your product. Our product? Like, yeah, it will be an RPN. Then you can just install it. Uh, just RPN like a tabor or RPN, you can just unzip it like that, then install, run the command, then you install everything on your system. Yes. Is there any other questions? No? Right. Thank you very much.